not timed, so you have to click it again. So that one, one click anywhere. There we go. Um, somebody hijacked my slides. <laughs> I don't appreciate that. So not only has Nick now stolen my slide that I've used for years and years and years, as I have no qualms in that free intro slide, he's never replaced my photo with a recreation of him. I don't know why you did that. All right, so I have a question. Whether or not you think Jay goes on that box, it says it should be a pizza topping and an award-winning Barry, like an actor. And I know how Barry was an actor. I can't remember if she spells her name with a J, like Spanish style. I do love jam on pizzas. So I'm kind of stuck. J or H? All right, so why am I asking you the question? All right, so two years ago, I started working at a company up in the Bay Area that I cannot insight or trade on. And uh, I, I had some, like, downtime on the bus. Uh, I was in that white bus there on 280, which looks like sadness. And I was like, what should I do? I've, I've read all my emails. I've all the links on Reddit are, are purple. So I started doing the BuzzFeed crossword. Uh, and I found out the BuzzFeed crossword was canceled like a week later. And I switched to the main, the only one that I knew was the New York Times crossword, which is like the biggest old man thing you can do. Like, I'm going to do the crossword. So um, the New York Times crossword is actually really interesting. So I got really into it. I did, I've been doing it for like years now. Uh, and it's the most pretty well known. You've probably heard of it. It's in movies. It's one of the hardest kind of standard puzzles. There's really brutally hard ones, but there's different. And it kind of sets the standard on shape, right? You've probably seen something that looks like it's 15 by 15 on the, during the week, and it's a little bit larger on the weekends. Um, and but people don't know about it because I jump in and start trying to do a crossword because they think they're cool or something like that. Nobody thinks that. Uh, is that it gets harder Monday to Saturday. So you might jump in on Friday and get like, this sucks. It's really hard. Yeah, because Monday is way easier. I solved the Monday one. Um, and there's themed answers throughout the week. Why am I telling you this? Because we're going to get to about that in a minute. Um, but it follows the traditional American format. You have contiguous white space. All the letters are checked. So you may not know this, but in a cross puzzle, every letter is in at least two words. That's so you can't just totally hork yourself by not knowing the only clue to that letter. And they're usually symmetric, which is kind of pleasing to the eye. Um, around the world, crosswords are a little bit different. So people have probably seen, like this one appears as an alternate puzzle in a lot of new American newspapers. That's the, kind of the British one. Japanese ones look a lot like the American ones, but the black squares cannot touch side to side. And then there's more dense ones where they just kind of block off the edges so you get more words. But the crossword puzzle is actually really old. Like you might think, like maybe it's old, maybe it's not. It's from 1793. Like it's as old as our country. Uh, although the first phrase like crossword puzzle popped up in like the 1800s, and the first modern puzzle was in the 1913s. And from there, it kind of had an interesting takeoff. So it stewed around for a bit years, and then it was like the hot fad of 1924. Like all the jazz and like prohibition and like Black Friday, um, we're getting. Uh, crossword puzzles. People wrote about there like it was a huge. Like, everyone in the newspaper on the subway in New York was doing them. They were the first pu puzzle book was sold, and people loved them. And some people hated them. A chief among them, the New York Times, <laughs> hated the crossword. They wrote a scathing review where they thought people who did crosswords were like apes. They're like this is the stupidest. It's not a game. Uh, it's utterly futile. It's a primitive mental exercise, and it's irrelevant. Uh, they changed their tune <laughs> about 24 years later, 28 years later. Uh, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, they're like, hey, the people can use a distraction. Crossword puzzles are like still a thing, right? So they decided to introduce it as kind of a, a distraction from people uh, to kind of take their minds off the fact they had no power from World War II. Um, these days, they're a little more advanced. In the old days, you have to kind of like put them together by hand. Now we have computer-aided tools. We have indie puzzles. You can go out there and do crossword puzzles based on like your favorite rappers. The BuzzFeed one's fun because it has clickbait in it. Like, if you wanted a clickbait crossword, that's a thing. It's a great thing. Uh, interestingly, they're overwhelmingly male. Uh, the original uh, editor at the New York Times was a woman. Uh, in recent years, I think because of the help of computer-aided programs, they're uh, like 95, 80, 80 to 90% uh, male authors. So you want to solve a crossword. That's the main part of this talk, is I think you should do them, because they're fun and they're good for your brain. Uh, start with the easy ones. Do the Monday ones, do the mini ones, because the mini ones you can solve in like 20 seconds. Uh, some tricks. People do crosswords, like, oh, how could it be? Well, there's actually a lot of tricks that make it a lot easier you don't know about. No one tells you. Uh, you should match the, the parts of the uh, clue. Like in this case, scoring 100%, you should say acing instead of aced or aces because it said scoring. You got to match that part of speech. So part of speech, language, all those. So that makes it a lot easier. Um, these little letters, so you kind of ignore them. If you see a question mark on a clue, it means it's going to be a pun. Like the answer is going to be like wordplay, which you would totally not know otherwise. Um, the quotes usually mean it's like a spoken phrase. Uh, crosswords usually have a lot of crossword ease in them. Uh, this is fun. If you do them long enough, you start learning about like, there's always, like, the, the, the creators get really lazy and they can't figure out how to make the words actually fit in that nice crossword puzzle format. So they get like, all right, like N N E. Oh, that's north by northeast. We'll just use that as the clue. Um, so there's a lot of kind of like garbage words like Enya is really popular. Um, there's harder clues, which I think are kind of bullshit. Like this one down here, nice one. They always capitalize the first letter and they might sound, they be words that you could pronounce different ways. So in this case, it's not nice one, it's nice one. So it's the French letter for, a French word for one. So it's une. I don't know how you're supposed to figure that out if you don't know about it. These ones are the ones I think are really bullshit. Occasionally, they will not actually put one letter in the box. You'll put a whole word. And they just won't tell you. I found that out like three weeks into starting to do them. And I, I was really angry. It ruined my commute. But thank you. That's a random rapid fire talk on crossword puzzles. I think you should do them. They're fun. And uh, 
I think that's Ignite. Are we done? I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs>